Hello everyone. Welcome to day one of the Sex Love Rock and Flow Challenge. Today we're talking about communication blocks that are killing your vibe. Um, and I just had another download. I'm just quickly writing it down so I don't forget to mention it. Um, about this. This is going to be a really good topic. So I'm going to give it a minute for you guys to just jump on. Um, sorry that I'm a bit late today. How's that? Nice little red lipstick on my teeth. <laughs> Let me know that you're here. Say hello. I'm going to quickly jump on and have a look on my phone to see if, just in case the, um, sometimes the comments don't show up. So you guys might know. Gosh, I'm actually like so excited for this. So excited because over the next three days, it's a little bit of an intro while we wait for people to jump on. Say hello when you're here. Um, I, this is a, so these over the next three days, this is a bit of a taste tester. Hey, Judah. This is a taste tester of my group program that's coming up called Pleasure and Play. So essentially, I want you guys to really um, look into, start thinking about the areas where you're feeling blocked in your relationship, start thinking about the behaviors and patterns that are showing up for you that are not serving you, that are um, holding you back from experiencing pleasure and play in your relationships. So whether you're single and um, you know, you're reflecting on your behaviors in your past relationship, or if you're currently in a relationship and some of these things are coming up, really tune into um, how often it's happening. And I want you guys to start sharing in the group on and ask me questions about some of the blocks that come up for you. So if you have a conversation with your partner and they're not necessarily understanding you or hearing you, that's what this space is about. That's what this challenge is for. It's so that we can overcome these blocks, overcome these issues and get to the root level and essentially transform out of where you're at and out of the patterns that you're experiencing into pleasure and play, into fun and all things. So, um, yes, I am a bit late, so I do apologize for that. I'm wondering if anyone else will be joining us at this time. If you are watching this at a later date, I do encourage you, I mean, it's one hour out of your day and if you come here live you're actually going to get much more out of this space um, by asking me by you know asking me all the questions and yeah I can answer I can answer your questions live all right so let's just get stuck straight into it um, so okay another thing that I want to mention before I do get into it is what I'm what I'll be teaching you is where the blocks are, where the patterns are, and how this is getting away of getting in the way of your um, pleasure and play in the relationship. So, if there's tension, if there's um, uh, things that are happening within the relationship between you two that um, you're feeling blocked about, and it's communication, for example, like what we're speaking about today, that's actually blocking you from experiencing. Um, that spark with your partner, that passion, that wild love, that sexual tension that builds up, that flirtatious fun. So um, everything that's happening outside of the bedroom is influencing what's going on inside the bedroom. And sometimes what happens inside the bedroom actually influences what's going on outside the bedroom as well. So if you're, for example, a woman and you're with a man who um, is unable to hold off his um, ejaculation and um, you're, it's very uncommon for you to experience an orgasm during sex, then that will create resentment and that seeps out into outside of the bedroom. Um, and so in pleasure and play, and I won't talk too much about it now, but we actually go deep into that. So I'll, I'm inviting someone in on to teach women and men how to, so a woman's going to come on and teach women how to give men um, sensual massages and I um, will be looking at 
sharing a semen retention video with you guys. But anyway, more on that later. All right, so who's here? Say hello. I can see people are watching. Let's get into it. All right, so one of the biggest communication blocks that are killing your vibe is the way that men and women deal with things. So I did a live video yesterday publicly on my Facebook about um, how women disempower men. Now, there's a few things that I will be repeating in this live video, but not too much. I'll be going into more depths. Hey, Jack. How are you? All right, so when a man requires space, what happens in this situation is, so just say you're having an argument and the communication is just you're kind of like meeting each other at a dead end. There's no understanding. He's saying um, one thing, you're saying a woman is saying another thing, she's saying another thing. And what tends to happen in these situations is after a heated conversation, after an argument, after something's happened, hey Luke, um, men require space and women like to talk. Um, and so what's happening here, if any of you guys watch the Fear and Power series, what's happening here is the man is in his warrior and he's creating healthy boundaries for himself and taking the time to process and deal with it in his own way. Whereas the woman is in her victim and her prostitute and she's actually feeling as though um, insecure. And so what ends up happening in this dynamic Mr. Part, what ends up happening in this dynamic is when he requires space, a woman ends up feeling um, unseen, unheard, abandoned. Sometimes abandonment issues come up for people in relationships when this happens, when a man goes off and goes into his little man cave. I got this out of a book called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, but they call it the man cave. So when a man goes off into his man cave, um, a woman tends to feel abandoned and she goes into overdrive thinking about all the possibilities of how you're going to break up with her, how a man is going to break up with her, um, and plays out all these different scenarios, overanalyzes what, what she did, how she did it, how she said it, what could have possibly have caused this um, absence of his presence and all this sort of crazy stuff, right? And then it, it, it's... It, it backlashes because then she gets pissed off that he's not speaking to her. Um, and so it's this, this is a huge thing that happens in a lot of relationships. Men and women just communicate differently. And so tomorrow I'm going to talk into triggers and projections. It's called gold triggers. Um, and so it's about mining the gold in triggers. So I'll be teaching you guys how to overcome when you're feeling triggered. And so what's happening in this specific scenario is a woman is actually feeling triggered that her man is dealing with his um, emotions in a different way to what she would. So women like to talk. Now, this is something that's really key and this is something that's really important for you guys to understand in, in what happens in relationships um, that creates more of a block. When a woman says to a man, I need to talk to you about something, right? And she's feeling all this tension. She's feeling anxious. She's feeling uptight. She's feeling that emotional kind of pressure within her, you know, that feeling that you, you have um, when you have to have a conversation with someone and it's confrontational, right? And she's feeling pissed. She's feeling angry, upset, whatever it is, right? Whatever the emotion is, there's this tension. Um, and when a woman speaks to a man, what's actually happening is this energy, she's, her cortisol levels are going down. She's starting to feel more calm the more she's speaking about it and the tension gets offloaded onto the man. And biologically what happens is the tension starts building up for the man because he starts feeling like he's not good enough. He feels like he's screwed up. He goes into overdrive trying to fix things. He's thinking about how to solve the problem. And there's this like push pull, and then that's when he goes into his man cave. And so this is so you can see how this dynamic um, creates a huge block in relationships. Okay, um, I'm starting off this live stream with what's happening, where the blocks are, and then I'll go into how you guys can overcome these blocks and invite. So 
there's going to be a lot of parallels. Now, sex is one of my favorite topics to talk about because what happens, how you communicate and what you're experiencing inside the bedroom is a parallel of what's going on outside the bedroom. So um, I'll go into that in a bit, in a bit later. All right. Then, so we have this sort of scenario happening. When a man tries to fix it, right, he's actually going into a space of codependency and rescuing. Um, I had a conversation with uh, someone, a man, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, actually. It's, geez, time flies. It's fast, yeah. Um, and he was telling me about his... Um, partner's mental health issues and how it's impacting on their relationship and it's been going on for months and she's just she has episodes and all these different um really intense experiences and he just really wants to be there for her and support her and um and i and 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 listening to that conversation and listening to him share his um share his story these are very, these are the codependency patterns that you need to watch out for in your relationship. It is not up to you to save your partner. It is up to them to do the inner work, to source counseling, to source coaching, to source someone from the outside to support them in order to overcome their issues. You are there to be their lover, not their mother or their father. And this happens in relationships a lot. So what I'm noticing, well, this is, this is the truth. This is what's happening. People have their inner child trauma and they bring that into the relationship. Either their father rejected them or abandoned them. Their mother was overpowering or manipulative, whatever it was, right? And, or there, they could be like, for example, if, um, if you're a male and you and you have a mother, you're a mama's boy, you have this like, um, expectation that your wife mothers you or your partner mothers you or your lover mothers you whatever it is and these dynamics and the way that this sort of um, pattern plays out it is a pattern um, is that it creates this kind of like bond where um, you as a uh, you are like ex sort of how do I put this it's creating this bond um, where you're playing the parent role. So in this situation that I, that I just shared with you, um, the man was trying to like support his partner and be there for her and almost father her. Um, and she just wasn't interested in that whatsoever. So um, you really want to pay attention to rescuing and codependency because what ends up happening is when you're constantly rescuing your partner. So if you're if you're a woman and you're rescuing a man and he's feeling like all sorts of things and you just want to save him, um, you are you are enabling the victim attitude and the victim behavior. So it's this victim rescuer dynamic that plays out, and that's a very codependent. Because um, what ends up happening is anytime this person feels victimized by anything or anyone or life itself, they bring that tension into the relationship and they expect you to fix it for them and save them in it. So you want to be careful that you don't step into that. And, and it's not so much that you don't want to step into it, but just observe your patterns. Is this a pattern that plays out for you? Are you rescuing? Are you trying to save your partner? Um, my ex experienced severe anxiety and he would be up like till all hours of the night. He couldn't sleep. That was his thing, right? And I would wait, lay awake with him and try and help him and try and be there for him. So what's happening for the rescuer is that they're feeling validated. So I felt validated. I was like, oh my God, I'm supporting my partner. I'm there for him. I'm the one that's going to help him get out of this mess. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help him get out of this anxiety and all the things. And so rather than sourcing my self-worth from within, I was looking for any opportunity to um, create this self-worth kind of um, this validation and this approval. And so what ended up happening in that situation was that resentment started to build up. I was always there for him. And then when it came to me requiring, like wanting him to be there for me, he just, his way of dealing with things was different. Um, and so 
You want to be careful if you're a rescuer to pay attention to the pattern because the moment you, if you're sourcing your self-worth from your partner, the moment they step away and they're no longer giving you that validation, you go, it, it, it completely throws you off. So when you reach a point that everything comes from you, everything's coming from within you, this is why it's really important to watch Fear and Power. Has anyone watched Fear and Power? Just let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions while I'm talking, please just ask away because it can pull things through and um, yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, another block that comes up is when she makes suggestions to improve him. Um, so, or if he makes suggestions to improve her, which doesn't happen as often. It's more the woman kind of like trying to do this sort of like improving thing that we do. Um, and how this plays out is it's, it's like, um, you have a, a vision of what you desire in a relationship. You have a vision of what you want out of your lover. And then there is who they are, right? So there's a mismatch between what you want and who they are. And so what happens in relationships is people try to mold the other person to fit within what they want out of their partner rather than just accepting who they are. Where you want to be is in a space of observation. And so what that means is you're not looking to change your partner or improve your partner. Your partner isn't a project for you. You are in a space of observing whether or not this person meets your standards. Um, now, this is something that is not so much. This is something that's more so like if you're looking you're like you're on the brink of a breakup. But just pay attention to that. Are you willing to accept your lover where they are at and who, for who they are? Or um, are you constantly making suggestions to improve them? When you're making suggestions to improve them, um, it creates this passive aggressive um, undertone in the relationship. And it's also, again, that victim rescuer dynamic because you don't think that they're um, able or you don't think that they're in there, you think that they're, it's not that you don't think, you don't think that they're good enough, but I don't think that that's accurate. Um, so for example, a really good example of this is when you are, just say that you have a particular way of folding the washing or you have a particular way of making the bed. This is such a like, simple thing. It's just a domesticating like thing around the house, right? Um, when you tell your partner that they're doing it wrong and that they should do it this way, your way, because your way is the right way, in a condescending way, it's really, it's repellent. It is so repellent. Like it is, it is creating this, um, it's creating this sort of naggy it's a naggy kind of vibe right um and so you don't want to repel your lover you want to seduce your lover so what that means is that just let them fold the way they want to fold or let them make the bed the way they want to make the bed and just accept that that's how they do it and that's how it is um it's such a simple example <laughs> um but yeah or even like with cooking, for example, um, I remember when my ex, he was like, I know how to make salmon. And I would, I would go in and be like, watching over his back. Are you sure you know how to make the salmon? Are you sure you're doing it right? Like, I just didn't trust him. And this is just like killer of the vibe. A man doesn't want to be told how to be how to be doing his thing. He wants to take lead. It's natural for him to be in his masculinity, to take lead, to do the thing. And if he says that he's going to do something as a woman, let him do it. Um, okay, cool. The next the next one is defense. How often are you showing up in your relationship with a defensive attitude? So if you are being defensive all the time, if you're on the rebound or if you're on the offense, so this is something that you 
you, um, I really, this is something that happens a lot for people. So do you ever find yourself sitting there thinking about a conversation that you had and then thinking about the next conversation you're going to have about something that you just spoke about? And do you start thinking about and planning your conversation? So you play it out like, then he's going to say this, and then I'm going to say this, then he's going to say this, then I'm going to say this, or she's going to say this, then I'll say this, she'll say this, and I'll say this. This is offensive, like when you're in the defense offense, and um, it's basically, and I'm going to go deeper into this tomorrow with triggers and projections, but basically what you're doing here is you're creating drama that hasn't even happened yet. You're creating drama up here. And so if you're creating drama up here, then you're going to look for as many opportunities to create drama in your reality. Because you're, it's like this like simmering energy that's happening and it's happening from within. And you're not in control of, um, you're not in control of your emotions, you're not in control of your reactions or responses. And so that's why you become defensive because you feel like you need to defend yourself um, rather than just not, you know, someone who doesn't give a shit about what people think, including their partner, doesn't, doesn't need to defend themselves. Um, so, so yeah, another thing to, another thing to notice is, um, how, do you, how are you speaking to your partner? Are you speaking clearly and directly or are you wishy-washy? Are you avoiding, like, are you wishy-washy with the way that you speak? Are you kind of beating around the bush or trying to avoid saying what you really think, saying what you really feel because you want to avoid the disapproval or you haven't yet claimed your power? Now, a goal for your relationship is that you both claim your power. This isn't a power play. Someone has more power than the other. It is that you are both in your power. You are both speaking directly. You are both not offended for about what the other person says and how they say it. It's direct. It's clear. There's no bullshit. Um, Luke Marshall, if you recognize these signs in your lover... Is there a good way to bring it to your lover's attention? Um, like if they're behaving in this sort of like toxic patterns and behaviors. Um, so that is not your responsibility to save them and to try and fix them. Um, if your partner is showing these signs of toxic behaviors and they're, um, and they're not doing any personal development or inner work to overcome these toxic patterns and behaviors, then um, you, I would suggest you really reconsider whether or not this is someone you want to be with. Because if you're going in one direction and you're choosing to evolve and choosing to expand and choosing to become a better version of yourself and reach your highest potential and reclaim your power and be in an empowered relationship and you have someone that's there who is um, not willing to do the work, not willing to show up, not willing to look inwards and um, develop and grow, then there's going to be a disconnect and you're either going to be moving up and dragging this person along or it's going to create this like push pull where you're, this person is going to feel victimized and you're going to be constantly trying to rescue them and save them and tell them, can't you just see it this way and can't you just see how like you're doing this and you're doing that. Um, I mean, this is why I'm doing this for couples. This is why this group challenge is for couples because it's about calling each other out on your shit. So when two people come together in the relationship and they're both willing to step forward and move into a space of growth and development and evolution, then the relationship is just going to bloom and flourish. Um, so the if you so my answer to you is this, Luke. That, what I just said, and also if you do recognize these signs in your lover, um, 
I would suggest speaking to them about what they think their toxic or unhealthy relationship patterns are um, and having that conversation and, and bringing yeah it's really up to them it's really up to them to decide but if the relationship is at a point where you're kind of like hitting you're in this like dead end then you're probably having these conversations anyway about how like all this shit that's breaking down in your relationship that's a really good question i hope i answered it for you all right this is a really, the next thing that I'm going to share with you guys is so common in relationships um, and it's the biggest killer of pleasure. It's the biggest killer of um, intimacy. It is, I mentioned a little bit about codependency but I'm going to go deeper into it now but it's about codependency and people pleasing and how this um, what's actually going on so someone who's codependent is in their victim shadow and so what that means is they are really sloppy with their boundaries and someone who is a people pleaser is in their prostitute shadow and this person is um sourcing their self-worth and wanting to please others before pleasing themselves because they don't have, they don't value their own time. They don't value themselves enough to put themselves first. Um, so, so yeah. So what ends up happening in this dynamic? Now, for those of you, if you want to download a self-evaluation codependency PDF that I have, let me know. I'll send you the link. Um, but people who are, if you're in a codependent relationship, what ends up happening is you are not clear on what you desire. You are not clear on your standards and the, for how you want to show up in the relationship. You're not clear on your boundaries. And what ends up happening is this. You put yourself on hold. You put your needs on hold. You put everything that you want on hold in order to support and be there for your partner. Um, and when you do this long enough, resentment builds because there will come a time that in the relationship dynamic, there will always be, not always, but there's one person who is like um, perceived as selfish to the people pleaser and the codependent. And then there is the other person who is the people pleaser and the codependent who is like constantly giving up what they want and doing what they um, feel to support their partner who is perceived as selfish. But really, their partner isn't, I'm actually doing a live stream on this um, in my new Facebook group, Aphrodisiac, um, where I go into the, the um, I can't remember, I think it was the people pleaser and the selfish lover, but um, what you wanna pay attention to is this, like the resentment is building because you're constantly doing everything for everyone else. So if you're in this dynamic, I can guarantee that if you're playing this out in your relationship, you're most likely playing this out in other relationships in your life with your family and with your friends as well. So how this meet, what, how this shows up, like what you can look out for is in this pattern is that Whenever a friend calls you, just say you go and sit down and you start reading a book or you sit down and you watch TV and a friend calls you and they've got something going on and you stop everything that you're doing to support them. That is you being a people pleaser and being codependent because you are feeling validated by feeling needed and through that, you end up putting yourself so far down your list of priorities that you burn out. And then you start having thoughts like this. No one's ever there for me. I'm always doing it on my own. I can't reach out to anybody. I don't know what, like, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to inconvenience. I feel inconvenience. Like, this is such an inconvenience for me right now, but I'll do it anyway. There's this, like, icky kind of, that resentment. It's resentment. It's that feeling that's beneath the surface that you're not communicating because you're not clear and direct 
on what it is that you truly desire and what your standards are for yourself. Essentially, what you want to, where you want to be in your relationship is that you are upholding the highest standards for you and who you are and your lover is doing the same thing. So that when you're both coming into the relationship at your highest potential, at your highest standard for yourselves, then you're coming in with truth. You're coming in with authenticity because you're no longer doing things to please your partner. You're no longer doing things to support them and seek that validation. You're doing things because you genuinely want to do those things. Um, and this is a very nuanced thing that happens. It's a, it's a, a nuanced pattern that um, you might miss because it's so deeply programmed in, you know, so deeply programmed in you that it's not even in your conscious awareness. It's happening unconsciously. And so that's what the shadow is. That's what those shadows archetype. That's what those shadow archetypes are. So you might, for example, just say you're a woman. Just say you're a woman. So for the women out there in this crew, if you are with a lover who is very, very pleasing in the bedroom, who is over, goes above and beyond in pleasing you and pleasuring you and giving you delight and um, and all the things, right? What happens outside the bedroom is that you compensate for that because women more often than not struggle with receiving. And so if you have a block around receiving inside the bedroom and you struggle with um, just accepting and receiving that for what it is, you overcompensate outside the bedroom by going above and beyond and doing all the things. And then that that creates this inauthentic expression because you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're doing it because you don't think that you're worthy of that attention. You're doing it because you don't think that you deserve um, to experience pleasure in the bedroom and that you struggle, you have that block around receiving. And so this is an automatic response that's happening and it's deeply programmed. Um, for men, how this might show up for you is that um, there's actually, it's really fascinating when, you know, I just thought women were mostly people pleasers, but having my men only group and, and working with men, a lot of men are people pleasers. It's fascinating. Um, and it's this happy wife, happy life, um, mentality that's been trickled down through generation after generation that is just so outdated. Um, and it's so... It's it's um it's it's not a, it's an unhealthy um, relationship pattern because when you're trying to please your partner, you're not actually doing what you truly desire, and so you're not showing up. Um, as I mentioned, you're not showing up with authenticity because you're constantly having a conversation inside with yourself, negotiating and compromising with yourself. Um, and the, do that often enough and resentment will be a byproduct. Resentment will show up. So then what happens is when you're so sloppy with your boundaries and by boundaries, I mean that, you know, you have your standards and your desires and your values of what you want. Your boundary is there for you to uphold that. So if you have a, um, desire to wake up in the morning and go for a run, and then your partner tries to keep you in bed because they want to cuddle you or whatever it is. This is a very simple example. It is up to you to decide whether or not you are going to uphold your boundaries and go for a run or if you're going to stay in bed and cuddle your partner. Now, if you decide to stay in bed and cuddle your partner, you are being sloppy with your boundaries. Do this often enough, the resentment builds, you don't go for a run, you put on weight, whatever happens, and then you decide, fuck this, I'm putting up a rigid boundary and so it becomes tense and then you become really agitated and it's coming from a place of fuck off I'm not cuddling you in the morning I need to go for a run and this rigid sloppy boundary setting is killing the vibe in your relationship you're not communicating from truth you're communicating from fear because you don't have the strength and the power to hold your own container and so um and so yeah 
you're placing your desires below your partner's desires. Your partner's desire is that he wants you to be in bed with you cuddling and your desire is to go for a run in the morning and the codependent will choose to put their partner's desires first um, and stay in bed. So, or she, whoever is in bed. Um, you need to take responsibility for yourself. And so we're going to go into this again tomorrow. Um, and, and, and also on Friday, I'll be talking to you guys more about desires and boundaries. Look, that is how I felt at times in the bedroom, struggled to receive. I definitely didn't value myself and feel I deserved it in those moments and felt much better about giving it. Thanks. That explains why light bulb moment. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. So if next time you're intimate with someone, Luke, because I know that you're single, or for those of you who are in a relationship and you are experiencing this, receive. So what I want you guys to do in your next sexual encounter, and this is um, something that we're going to talk about on Friday, because Friday night you're going on a date. For those of you in a relationship, I want you guys to create a date. Now, Judith, I know that you're just speaking in the ether with your partner. Um, so create a date on Friday night with your lover. And we're going to talk a little bit more into that. I'll be, I'll be going into that with you on Friday. But save the date. I forgot to mention that. I should have probably mentioned that. Anyway. Okay. So there's a lot of content here, guys. I'm just about halfway through. <laughs> Right, so as someone who is um, unable to clearly communicate what they want, so someone who is very wishy-washy, as I mentioned earlier, is unable to speak clearly and directly, will often find themselves using um, manipulation and being really sneaky about getting their way. And this is comes, coming from a space of entitlement and spoiled sort of nature. So pay attention to when you're doing things for tit for tat. Are you doing things in order to receive something in return? Are you paying, are you um, like keeping tr uh, track of all the things that have happened that you've done? So um, I'll give you an example of this. In a former relationship, um, uh, my ex-partner's mother actually threw a lot of things in my face. Um, and he kind of brought up all the things that she had done and paid for and all these sorts of things. And I was like, I didn't expect, I didn't think that you did those things because you were doing them. To throw it in my face i thought you were doing them because you genuinely wanted to shout me this or do that or do this and i was very shocked um and then i saw how this pattern played out in our relationship like i did this for you so you should do this for me that is really unhealthy that is not how that's not love like that's not what a relationship is about you don't do things for your partner just in order to receive something in return um and so this is like big challenges to receive Judith, can you not just decide to change your boundaries? Yes. So I'll be talking more about boundaries later this week. Boundaries are permeable. You don't want to be rigid and you don't want to be sloppy with your boundaries. You want to pay attention to what you want to be firm, but flexible with your boundaries. So just say, for example, you are um, like the example that I gave you earlier about going for a run in the morning and, and your partner staying in bed. You can change your boundaries and be like, okay, well, today today I'll do it, um, but tomorrow I'm going to go for a run. And if you continue to not go for a run, that's when the resentment builds. So you are in charge of your boundaries and you are in charge of deciding that they're permeable. You are, deciding, you are in charge of deciding how you want to shift out of them and all the things. But Pay attention to where it's coming from. Are you coming from a place of wanting to please your partner above your own needs and desires? Or is it that you are just flexible with your boundary in that moment? But the thing is, guys, and this is one of the other key points to this um, challenge, is that you decide 
how your relationship works. You decide your dynamic in your relationship. You make the rules. Every relationship has its own rules. And it's between you and your partner to create those rules. Um, so yeah, back to the manipulation and sneaky to get your way. Um, if you are unable to command your presence, so when you're direct and clear, so yeah, when you're direct and clear on your requirements, standards and values, you have authority. It's not that you have authority over your partner because it's not about a power play. It takes two to tango. So what you want to do is be in the space that both of you are claiming your power and both of you are in your authority for what it is that you desire and what it is that you want. You are in authority over your standards. You are in authority over your values. And so therefore, you command that presence. You are, um, when you're commanding that presence from your partner, you don't need to be sneaky and you don't need to manipulate in order to get their attention because you are in um, the essence of truth. You're in the essence of truth. Um, and so... Often people will have a um, hard time, like women will often complain that their partners aren't listening to them because they're coming from a space of naggy and needy and clingy energy. Whereas a woman in her power, in her high feminine, in her highest potential doesn't need to, um, doesn't even need a man's attention. But she gets it anyway because she commands it in because she's in her authority. So this is the child sovereign shadow to light um, in the fear and power series. And it's, it's like being in that queen and being in that king energy. When you're both in that energy of the king and the queen, you're in the relationship in your power. Um, and actually, I had a guy reach out to me who spoke to me about um, his relationship and his, his girlfriend wasn't actually, um, his girlfriend wasn't spending time with him on the weekend. She would just go out with the girls and all the things. And um, in that specific example and in that dynamic, what was happening was that he wasn't commanding her presence in because he didn't have that authority within himself. It's like when you walk into a room and people know that you're there oh shit, you just walked into the room. That's where you want to be playing, okay? All right. Um, all right, so when I, I just want to talk to you guys about how to overcome these relationship patterns and blocks, okay? Um, so women, if you are in a relationship and, or if you were in a relationship with a man or whatever, like pay attention to his body language. Sometimes, um, if, like if he needs space, just let him have space. If he's not communicating, if he's not kissing you, if he's not being physical with you, if he's not being affectionate, don't take that personally. I'm going to go into, again, as I said yesterday, these triggers and, and projections tomorrow. But also men, if you need space, communicate that. Um, sometimes, now... Some think, like some people recommend that you say to a woman, you know, I love you, there's nothing to worry about and, you know, I just need some space right now and all the things. But where you want to be in a relationship is that you don't need to um, like coddle them into believing that. As a woman who knows her power, who knows that she's in her divine and high feminine, she doesn't need you to validate your feelings to her because she's already sure of herself so that's where you want to be but as you're breaking these patterns communication is key and you want to be sure that if you are needing a break and you're needing some space not necessarily a, a break in the relationship but if you're needing some space communicate that and just let him be Stop rescuing each other and relying on each other. So what ends up happening in, so what you, where you want to be is like when that person, what ends up happening is when you're rescuing each other and relying on each other is that when that person isn't there for you, it builds resentment. It brings up this 
childhood trauma of abandonment and whatever other um, thing that comes up. Now, I just really want to touch on like child, inner child trauma. You are not a victim of your childhood. Shit happened. It's in the past. What is happening presently in your relationship is present to your relationship. And instead of allowing your childhood to have power over you and your emotions and <clears throat> expecting your partner to save you because of your of something that happened when you were a kid um, you want to be in a space of knowing that your partner is not responsible for saving you your partner has nothing to do with what happened to you as a child and what happened to you as a child has nothing to do with where you're at right now staying present is key um, and so I, as I said I will be going into this tomorrow with triggers and, and, and projections and all the things um, because there's so much to there's so much to discover from your triggers about yourself and so much that um, so much growth and expansion that can be experienced when you overcome your triggers and you get to the root of your triggers um, so instead, where you want to be is you want to have your own back. You want to hold yourself so that when you're in a relationship, you're coming in together whole. You are whole. They are whole. There's no reliability on that person. Now, the victim is, when the victim requires support from their partner, it's coming from a space of rescuing and saving. When a warrior requires support from their lover, it's coming from a space of um, just genuine support for the cause. So just say, for example, you are throwing a dinner party after COVID-19 bullshit lockdowns end and you decide to throw a, um, a dinner party. Asking your partner to support you in setting things up is the kind of support that I'm talking about that's really healthy. Asking your partner to save you um, is it's it's killing the vibe. It is killing the vibe in the relationship because doing this often enough, um, as I said many times over, is creating the codependent pattern, which is not going to allow your relationship to thrive because there's constant drama being brought into the relationship. Um, all right. The final thing I'm going to say to you is end the double conversation. And what I mean by that is that you're having one conversation up here and then you're having another conversation verbally. End that. You want to be fully expressed in your relationship, unfiltered. When you are fully expressed and unfiltered in your relationship. Now this happens a lot at the beginning of the relationship. Um, and then it all be gets revealed as the relationship grows over time. But if you can think about it, at the beginning of the relationship, how often you're holding back from what you really feel, what you really think, what you really desire because you want to please that person because you want them to like you. Now, if you can flip that and go into the beginning of a relationship with an obs obs observation attitude, so you're observing whether or not this person is meeting you at your standards, meeting you at your values, meeting you at your requirements, meeting you where you, where you are with yourself. Um, it completely shifts it around. And so rather than having the double conversation and holding back and thinking, oh, I don't want to say this because I don't want him to him or her to think this of me or whatever it is, you're actually filtering yourself and you are um, risking the creating a relationship on shadow and where you want to be is creating a relationship in truth which is the light archetypes in the fear and power series if you haven't already watched the fear and power series do it um it's powerful stuff so so lorna talks a lot about um businesses and things like that but it's also it also works in relationships it's like keen relationships as tool shadow alchemy um and we will go deeper in on that in the pleasure and play challenge so 
when you end the double conversation, you are clearly communicating your desires. And so, as I mentioned at the beginning of this call, um, how we're going to weave this into the bedroom is that I want you guys, actually, let me have a quick look. What is your homework specifically? So for your homework today, I want you to come share with me in the group what shadows mostly play out in your communication. So that's why it's important to look at the fear and power. Are you in your child? Are you in your victim? Are you in your saboteur? Are you in your prostitute? And then I want you to directly communicate your deepest and darkest desires for yourself without filter. So what that means is, what are your deepest and darkest desires for your life? What is it that you truly, truly, truly want? If you didn't have to take anybody into account or anything or any whatever, what is it that you want out of your life? Um, in relationships, in your health, in your um, career, in your work, in your lifestyle, do you want luxury? Do you want, sim like, what do you want? What do you want from life? Um, and I want you guys to be real. If you can be clear on what your true desires are for who you are without compromising and negotiating with yourself, this is going to collapse a lot of, um, the bullshit. And so this is also, I want you guys to communicate your deepest and darkest desires in the bedroom. Like, I want details. I want to know what you want. If you're interested in BDSM, do you want to experience a BDSM experience? Are you wanting something that's more passionate, sensual, slow, soft? Do you want to experience anal? Um, do you want to experience um, threesome or an orgy? Or do you want to have sex with the same sex? What is it? If you are able to communicate that clearly and clearly communicate your desires, um, you're going to overcome a lot of shame and you're going to overcome a lot of your communication blocks by just saying it. And I want you guys to really tune into and hone in on how you're feeling before you express it and what happens for you after. So does anybody have any questions for today? Um, now, the other thing is when you are communicating these things, you are not responsible for how your partner receives this. If they feel triggered, we're going to go on. I've got you. We're going to go through this tomorrow. So I'll be teaching you how to overcome those triggers um, so that you are not afraid of the truth because people are afraid of speaking the truth because of how people respond to the truth. Not a, not a lot of people can actually handle the truth. Um, and that's why people decide to lie because those people who are lying are generally people who are or fabricating the truth are generally people who struggle with receiving the truth. So I got you tomorrow. We're going to go through, um, personal responsibility, gold triggers is what I've called it. So really mining the gold from where you're feeling triggered and, um, accessing your highest self by getting to the root of your triggers and clearing all that bullshit out and um, and showing up with, with truth in your relationship. So, yeah, I'll just give it a minute because sometimes the comments take a while to come through and, um, yeah, but today's been really fun. Far out, we went through a lot of really juicy content. And, yeah, so... Well, while you are writing your questions, you're not clear on where the gold mind comes in and where we start. Okay, so go and watch the Fear and Power series. So I've pinned um, a photo at the top of this group. Um, and it says start here and there's a list of things to do. So there's a link to the Fear and Power series. You can go and watch that. I think Lorna talks about um, the gold mind map. So the gold mind, if you can think about what gold is, um, it is like pure lux and it's having like, when you're in your gold mind, you're in the truth. So you're 
essentially when when we get to the depths of this so then this is what will happen in um, pleasure and play we go deep into the very specific patterns that you're experiencing and we work on um, deprogramming you, your psyche out of these unhealthy patterns and reprogramming your psyche so that you are um, and your energy so that you are showing up in your relationship with truth and the gold mind comes in is when your unconscious mind is no longer in shadow it is it becomes light it becomes gold so when you're mining the gold you're actually um when you alchemize your shadows and i'm not going to go too much into this because it's all there available for you but when you alchemize your shadow so when the shadow being the fear um and the illusion that is operating in your unconscious when you alchemize that, you are restructuring your conscious mind. So everything that's happening instinctively goes from fear and illusion from the shadow into light and power and truth. And so when you are mining the gold, you're actually accessing more energy. So the energy that comes, the toxic energy that comes in from fear, from illusion, from um yeah, from the fear and illusion, that's all this toxic energy. So all the things that I spoke about today when I was talking about the victim and the prostitute and the child and all the things that I was speaking about where, you know, you're trying to rescue your partner, you're trying to save them, that's all coming from a space of fear. And so essentially where we want to, and that's an instinctual response to your partner. And these, this is why it's called a pattern. And this is why it's a behavior because it's a habit. It's happening instinctively. Where you want to be is that your instinct is to be in truth. Your instinct is to be in power, not in fear. So your instinct then becomes that you are no longer needing to rescue your partner because you know that they have their own back and they're taking personal responsibility for themselves. And then their instinct is that they don't come to you in order to save them because they have their own back and they become personal responsible. And so that's when you become whole in the relationship and both of you come together in your highest selves and in your highest potential and yeah. Um, and so mining the gold is, is literally taking that toxic energy and transforming it, transmuting it. So you're not getting rid of it. Like, um, and so a lot of, uh, a lot of teachers out there will teach you how to, um, like integrate your shadows and all the things. This is about alchemizing your shadow. So you're shifting the shadow from its toxic form into its, purest form so you're going from toxic energy to pure energy and you can feel it in your body you can feel it when you've restructured your psyche you can feel it when um that trigger is no longer there and i'll go deeper into that tomorrow um but yeah when we yeah i wanted to just quickly say that with pleasure and play we will go deeper into this sort of stuff so i will be um it will be a group call on zoom and i'll be laser coaching so it'll be hot seat coaching so a couple of people have an opportunity to jump on and share their actual relationship issues with me and their relationship patterns and i'll coach you on the call um and that starts on august 10 so but this is as i said a little taste tester of what's to come so so yes you guys are clear on your homework. I'll just post a photo in here so that you can see what the task is clearly. Um, and I will see you tomorrow morning. If you don't, if you have any more questions, by all means, just leave them in the spe in the group. Write a post, share share your experiences, guys. Like this group is for you to take advantage of my free coaching, essentially. Like that's what this space is for, and. That's why I wrote that post the other day that I was really shocked that there's not much engagement. Like you're kind of like, there's a, there's a lot of fear of there's something going on. There's a resistance and, um, you can overcome that. Once you overcome that fear of what people think of you, you're going to kill a lot of that fear that's happening and showing up for you in your relationship. So use the space. Um, yeah. This is really fun for me and I hope you guys had fun too and I will see you 
I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.